All right, where I left off on the last video, I was showing you that shape tools aren't going to help you do everything. Like I couldn't make this shape of the upper eyelid with just a rectangle tool. It didn't have enough anchor points. I can show you how to add anchor points, but that's just, it's inefficient. So instead I used the pen tool and I showed you how you can make straights and curves and then you can edit them. And now that I have that eyelid placed where I want, I can take its transparency back to 100% opacity. Right. And so far I have a little bit done. To show you again how the pen tool works, you'll find it right underneath the small select or the direct selection tool, but underneath that is where it's called, I call it the free, the free form pen tool, but it's a curve. They call it the curvature tool, it looks like. To make a path this way, I click to start. And then it will, let's see, click to start. Why is it not doing it for me? There we go. So I have to make uh, two anchor points first. Command Z here, get back to the beginning. And then immediately it will start rendering the curve, like along with me. So this curvature tool can be a helpful kind of shortcut to the pin tool where it won't give you straights all the time. But remember, I want you to always close your paths and that can be really tricky. Because if they're not closed, then they're always going to close themselves with just a straight line between your last point and your first point. And it just works by giving you kind of an average curve along your point. So let's see if I can swap this around to give me my lower eyelid. Always is curves. Pretty nice. And then to close the path, it kind of made it a little wonky, but that's something I can work with, with the small selection tool. I can kind of pull it out. I can play with these curves. Everything here is a curve I can manipulate. The whites are the actual anchor points. And I can even tug these so that they're overlapping with my upper eyelid. But then trying to get this to be perfectly clean can be a little challenging. I can even map one anchor on top of another anchor in essence, deleting them and simplifying them to clean it up. Okay, so those are the, the two kind of basic tool pin tools. If you're not seeing all these tools, click on the top of your toolbar. Or, sorry, click on the three dots at the bottom of your toolbar. And you'll see that you have a lot of tool options. We're using the basic setup right now. So if you click on the little tool options window, you just want it on basic to match what I'm seeing here. And if you lose them, you can go to window and go to tools and go to basic. But even the basic ones have ones in the, the drawers. And notice little things will happen that we need to address with these tools. Okay, that is... Just a quick introduction to the pin tool. Last video and then there with the curving pin tool. Now I'm going to show you my favorite tools. And my absolute favorite is the blob brush. But underneath the blob brush is my other favorite. It's called the pencil. Now the blob brush tool really only works well with a tablet. It was a later addition to Illustrator. You need a tablet. You need a drawing stylus. The pencil tool is made to work with a mouse. So I'll first show you the pencil tool. If I want to draw a complex shape, I simply click and start drawing. So click and drag. And I have a lot of overlapping kind of linear shapes with different widths. So think of the pen tool like scissors. I'm cutting out my black paper. 
And then when I'm close to closing it, you'll see that little circle. Then it will close. Notice it didn't draw the shape exactly like I drew it. Because if you double click on the pencil tool, you can set it to be more accurate to what you draw or to smooth it as you go. I tend to like it a little bit smoother than I draw <laughs> if I'm going for a clean logo. So let me try that again now that I've changed that smooth setting. And I'm just doing it not with a mouse, but with a trackpad. So nothing too accurate because I have to click and draw at the same time. And I can chunk it in as many sections as I want and then merge them together with the Pathfinder later. But make sure you close your path. But you see how that cleaned it up pretty nicely? Now I'm going to fill that with black and no stroke. Now the problem with the pencil tool over the pen tool is it's going to give you maybe more anchor points than you need, but controlling that smoothness, that's not a bad thing. Because as long as it looks the way you want, if you hold down command, it's a shortcut to the last selection tool. So it's a way to kind of click so you don't see your anchors anymore. And then it can work. Here's the other thing I love about the pencil tool, my absolute favorite. If you click on it so you can see the anchors, so I'm just holding command to get to the small selection tool. And then you draw through an anchor point that you want to keep. And then end by drawing through another anchor point that you want to keep. It's like magic scissors. It will reshape that path for you. Does that make sense? So I don't need to use the small selection tool and drag out an anchor. Instead, like magic scissors, I can just correct any part on that pencil that I want. Or I can extend it. I just have to go through an anchor point that already exists. And I can say, okay, I want to take this curve up now. And I want to extend it across here. Then I want to loop it down. Even if I'm a little shaky. Then I want to loop it here. I want to do a big loop here and a shape here. Then I want to loop it back. And then I want to do this and this, and this, and you can do this with a tablet as well, and this, and this, and I'm just kind of building it from the eye out. But you have to remember where you started and end through an anchor point that you want to keep. So let's look at this. You see how it's overlapping with what I already have? That's because it's a separate path. It's a separate path in my layer. So if I want to redraw this line, I have to go through the anchor point and then push this back and then go through another anchor point and it will redraw it without hurting the path underneath. What if I want to merge these together so they all become one path? Well, that's where I hold down Shift and Command to get the small selection, select them both, so these overlapping paths are selected, and then I can use Pathfinder to merge them together into one shape, which then allows me, like I might as well throw this one in there too, which then allows me to use my magic pencil tool and my magic scissors here to clean up all those transitions. Whoops. I have to see the anchor points first, otherwise it will create a new path. And you have to start through an anchor and end through an anchor. Now that looks pretty good. The problem is that's a ton of anchor points, and so it looks fussy. So there's another tool that's really helpful that might not be in these basics. So I might want to add it. And if I want to add it, I click on the three dots, and I have to find it. It's called the Smooth tool. And it works really well with the pencil. There it is, Smooth Tool. So click on that. I can drag it and add it into the pencil. Then I can click on the three dots, close it. So now in the drawer, not as there, there's not only just a pencil tool, there's also a smooth tool. If I use the smooth tool, all it does is average out the, the anchor points and reduce them down. 
and it smooths out curves. And it will never add anchor points. It will just kind of average between them. But I can always go back to the pencil tool and just redraw that edge if I want to clean it up. Okay, so far so good. Now, what if I want to merge this eyeball with this? I hold down Command, I get to the Direct Selection tool. I hold down Shift with Command to select the overlapping paths. I merge them together with Pathfinder. Now, what about this? I can use my Pencil tool, draw through, loop around, draw through. Now that they're overlapping, I can hold down Shift and Command and merge them together with the Pathfinder. And then I can use my pencil tool and redraw this outer edge. So I love the pencil tool, especially if you're having trouble with the pen tool. And if you need to smooth it out, just add that smooth tool in, and that will help even out your curves. But that eye looks pretty clean. Matches my intentions pretty well. It was created with the pen tool and then with some of these others. I can also use the smooth tool on that sharp point and I can soften it out. Which is a lot easier than trying to redraw it. Because often when you use the pen tool, you'll get awkward angles, awkward transitions. So try smoothing things out. But sometimes you just need to draw it with the pencil. Or you just need to select the anchor point directly. And work it from there. Where students usually have trouble with this is with the, the pencil tool and redrawing. Instead of it correcting a path, it makes a, a separate path on its own. And so you just need to kind of practice pretty clean selecting, even if you're using a mouse or a trackpad. So now I'm going to show you my ultimate favorite tool. It's not always the cleanest, but it gives you a really nice result. So before, it was this pencil tool that I used. So with that pencil tool, I can redraw as long as I start with an anchor point and end through an existing anchor point. But sometimes little nitpicky stuff will happen like that, right? where there's a fussy little shape left. So there's a tool that both merges overlapping paths and fills in all at the same time. And that tool is called the blob brush. Because it's pretty different and it relies on having a working tablet, I'm going to lock the layer of the work I've done so far, and I'm going to make a new layer on top. You can make as many organizational layers as you want. And I'm going to call this layer Blob Brush, all in caps, because maybe it's an approach you want. I want you all to try it. With, with a tablet, you are going to click on what's called the Paintbrush tool, but then look underneath it, because the Paintbrush tool just gives you strokes, and you don't want that. You want the Blob Brush tool. The Blob Brush tool, you're going to double click it just like you can for the pencil, you can set it to be more smooth than accurate, which I like to do, but you can also set it to be a certain size. I'm going to make it pretty small. These are in point sizes because these are vectors, not pixel sizes. And then you can set it to be pressure sensitive, just like a brush in Photoshop. But you have to set the variation as well. So I have a point size of 41 points. My variation is 40 points which means within this size brush, if I press hard, it will fill in the whole thing. And if I press really lightly, it'll just give me a thin strip. If that seems a little too thick, I'm going to take it down a little bit, maybe to 30. And now 
I can just paint.